Welcome to Real Estate Radio Live, an informative and engaging podcast discussing everything you need to know about the world of real estate. Your host, Joe Kachera, provides you with insight and guidance on how to buy, sell, finance, and invest in real estate. He also offers real estate tax management strategies, new construction advice, home improvement tips, and much, much more. And now, to guide you around the world of real estate, here's your host and Real Estate Radio Live team leader, Joe Kachera. Welcome in. It's Joe Kachera with Real Estate Radio Live, the podcast series. As we move along the week, it is uh, Joe Kachera sitting alongside Mike D'Ambrosio. Good to have you here, Mike. Good to be here. Thank you. We are uh, going to have a great topic. I think it's going to be a good topic today. We're going to talk about investing uh, in investment strategies and opportunities in and around real estate. Uh, and we're going to go into some details about that. So hopefully we'll find it informational. Before we jump in, just as a reminder, if you need any guidance, information on uh, purchasing, buying, selling, as you know, if you listen to the show and, and hear a lot of the information that's going on, the market is crazy, and crazy in a way that low inventory, tough to get your offers accepted, and I'll say it again, I'll always say it most likely until I have this show, is that make sure you are working with the right people all the time in general. You, you've heard Mike and I talk about teams, making sure you align yourself with people that could help you through the navigate through the transaction, and not only you know buying, selling, financing, but you know do you need other people with you? Along the way, CPA, tax advice, legal advice, all those things, we could help you with with all that. So if you need help on the buy side, sell side, some consultation, you could always contact Mike. A couple different ways you could do that, 408-630-0101. And always email Mike at reradiolive.com. Best also to visit the website, Mike D. Sells, Mike D. S. E. L. L. S. dot com. If you need any financing or some information about getting pre-approved, maybe looking at uh, you don't want to leave your house because you're figuring you might be stuck there for a while. <laughs> you maybe <laughs> want to remodel, do that kitchen, bathroom, whatever. Uh, I could help you with the financing side, 408-838-9060, or you could always email joe at reradiolive.com. So investment strategies, Mike, and opportunities. I know you are... Really diving a lot in the last couple of years in the development stuff, so we could talk a little bit about that. But I think to really lay the foundation or the groundwork for this would be, you know, my thought, and we talked about you have people with all this equity, which mm-hmm. is good, feeling pretty good about it. And some people already have multiple properties. But then you and I hear a lot of the same. Some people are going, God, I'd really love to invest. I don't know where to invest. We hear it, right? Is it too expensive here? And mm-hmm. if I do... Where do I get the money? And I don't know if I could really afford it by myself, or should I do a partnership? So there's all these questions, right? So I thought we'd talk a little bit today about, you know, um, some of our experiences, what we see, what we see working, maybe not working, give us some advice yeah, and some thoughts about that. Yeah, well, I think the biggest, uh, one of the, the most blatant and clear uh, ideas is if you're sitting on an old rental property <laughs> and you're listening to this podcast, I mean, that's the easiest one. Now, not everyone has those, but if you bought a townhouse in Mountain View 20 years ago, chances are that bad boy is, uh, oh, yeah. you're sitting on some equity unless you leveraged it to death, yeah. uh, which I hope you didn't. But, you know, a townhouse in Mountain View, is, depending on where it is, could be a million and a half, $2 million, you know, just, and you may have bought it for a hundred thousand. Yeah. So, that is the easiest example. Let's just start off with the easiest. If you're sitting on an old rental property that maybe you've depreciated, uh, already used up all the depreciation, mm-hmm. you've gained a bunch of equity in it, and maybe it's not, ca- you know, I'm, I'm sure it's cash flowing just yeah. fine, but there might be an opportunity to leverage that into mm-hmm. buying something with multiple income right. streams or uh, Ron Ricard, our buddy, the 1031 mm-hmm. guy, his favorite example of all time. I've seen him speak you know, yeah. multiple times because he's great. Um, one of his favorite clients is a lady who sold, uh, it was like a, yeah, it was like an investment property that ended up increasing the value to about a million eight. And she bought, I think, 16 or 17 homes in Vegas. Oh, man. And so 
And now that's her retirement. Yeah. That's her pension. You that's know, cool. basically is now she has 17, 16 <clears throat> income streams. Granted, it's a, it's a little bit less per house, yeah, but it's right. more overall, overall because the numbers work better out of state usually than they do right. here. So. Yeah, that's a good point. Let's talk, let's stay on that topic for a couple of minutes. And the reason why is you bring up a good point, Mike. I had a, a gal on, um, God, what was her name? Um, trying to think of the, she does, she's done investing for years now. She's down in Southern California. She helps people buy in Texas and all these other places. I'll think of it for a second. She was just on the show last week. She was talking about some of the same examples. And the example you use, let's say you, you do have this property in Mountain View. You almost owe nothing on it or very small, free and clear. And yeah. It's worth $2.5 million. I think what you really should think about, instead of getting, and it's easy to do, believe me, too, because I have a rental. If it's easy to think, oh, my God, this thing keeps going up. It's always going to go up. It's never going to stop going up. And I hate to you know, get out of property in Silicon Valley. That could, That's correct. That, that could be. But as your example... Let's just say you have a million and a half, and you 1031 and buy into a apartment complex, right? Yeah. Or in this case, Vegas, Texas, somewhere else. We're not suggesting automatically do that. The idea is that you really should talk to someone who understands this dynamic and that could help you. And I know, Mike, you do it. Um, we've had uh, Scott on the show before. Mm-hmm. Work with someone. I mean, to sit down with someone like yourself to run these numbers, right? Yeah. Hypothetically, you could run those numbers. You Absolutely. could say, okay, if I purchased a, you know, a, a 10, 10 unit apartment complex in downtown San Jose, what mm-hmm. would that cost? How much would it be? Right. What would my rent roll? All that Absolutely. kind of stuff. Right? Yeah. It's, you just lay out the numbers. I mean, it's pretty simple, you know? Yeah. So that, it's a good strategy. I mean, to go from, again, cause the numbers don't correlate here. Like if you buy an investment property in Texas for 150,000, mm-hmm. we've used this example right. multiple times. 150,000, chances are you're going to be getting at least $1,500 a month rent, which yep. is about it's 1%. Right. If you buy a home here, a rental property that's going to in a in a okay area it might cost you $750,000. Right. You're not getting 7,500 bucks a month right. in rent. You're getting maybe Two thousand to three thousand right. dollars, so slightly higher than that. So, but you're buying for appreciation here, whereas other areas you're buying for, and and you and you're buying for the income, and you don't have to go that far to do that. You don't have to go to Texas or Jack or Florida. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's other areas of California you can do that in. There's right. Central Valley. There's yeah. there's um you know you can go South County South mm-hmm. like Watsonville, Salinas, all those, all Good those point. areas. So there's other areas of California you can take advantage of. I mean, the bottom line is, for the most part, rents are probably going to stay strong, right? If you look at the demographics and you understand the population is going to continue to grow, there's not a whole lot of places to build, Mm -hmm. you have a strong job market. And even as you said, Mike, I mean, if you ventured out the Central Valley, some of these places, Turlock, Livermore, um, there's a number of these places, you know, you could get multi-unit properties or even... Uh, a complex. I talked to a gentleman today. We're going back and forth. He's buying, I forget, a twelve or fifteen unit in Arizona for like one and a half million. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so I you forget what the rents were, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. So the idea, uh, what we really want to talk about today's show is, you know, think about your opportunities and your strategies. Number one, as Mike said, if you already have a property, you are fortunate. You're in the driver's seat. You've already got some foundational work laid. you got some equity built, hopefully. Then the next step for you would be to sit down with someone like Mike. Okay, what what it would mean? What if I sold this house, Mike? What if I sold it? What if I got $2 million? And if I net 1.8? Okay, so now what does this mean? So what do I do? Yeah. What kind of opportunities? Um, and, of course, you know, the nice thing, too, Mike, a lot of people don't. I don't. I think a lot of people forget about if you buy something with five or more units, it's commercial. Yeah, it's different. And the reason why that's different too is that the investment and the income and the qualification is more on the property than it is the individual. Yeah. So a lot of people forget about that. So if you're going Correct. to, you know, if you cash out of this place in Mountain View and Mike's helping you find a multi-unit, six, seven, whatever units or ten units, um, remember. Don't get nervous like, well, oh, my God, how am I going to afford the payments on that? You have to remember most of the time it's really about the property, depending on how much money you put down. Typically, you're going to have to put at least 25% down or more. But then 
you have the rent rolls, and it's going to depend on what the rent is, and that's really how they qualify. Yeah. And that's something that they really keep in mind, too. Yeah. So, no, it's not always about you. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> so, I tell my kids all the time. That's right. It's not always about you. So, and then, the, I mean, the other thing to think about, too, uh, going along the same line, maybe you don't have a property mm-hmm. to leverage yeah, or, yep. you know, so, and then... Or you have your just your 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 home you live in, and, mm-hmm. and maybe you have some equity in that. I mean, you can always take out some money right. on that. And the good thing about that is, you know, a, a lot of people don't like to over leverage themselves, mm-hmm. and and that's smart. You shouldn't. But you know, even getting a, a line of credit or something, they're not going to let you <clears throat> go more than eighty percent on no. the value of the property. So really, you're okay. You know, it's not like back in '08 when they're they're lending over a hundred percent on properties, yeah. you know, that's not happening anymore. So I think that you could use that. Well, I don't talk about that financing yeah. side of it. Yeah. We're going to take a break in a minute or so, yeah. but we'll, we'll go into more when we come back. But, um, the financing side and Mike had just mentioned, I'm a big fan of leveraging property to do additional investing when you're putting money back into property or investment opportunities. The reason why is because, and, you know, this is not new to a lot of people, but I always love to say, and we talk about, you know, when you have an appreciating asset, right? Mm-hmm. If you take $200,000 from your house that worth, is worth, two, you know, a million and a half, and you go take that 200000 out of that house, and now you invest in another property or even remodel, your, whatever it is, the point is you take that $200,000 out, yeah, you're still making mortgage payments on that 200000 but here's the here's the part that's really cool is that you access that from an appreciating asset. Yeah. Right? You didn't right. go to a bank and say, "Hey, B of A, can I yeah. borrow 200 grand?" And what does B of A do? They give you a loan, terrible rates probably. <laughs> all terrible. They're all terrible unless you come to me. <laughs> that's anyway, right. I'm kidding. But seriously, you get a, you get a loan for 200,000 from a bank, you're going to make your payments. They're probably going to be higher cuz it's who knows yeah. what kind of loan. Not on property is my point if yeah. it's not leveraging property. But when you get a basic loan, there's there's no appreciating asset. Yep. Right? That's kind of the beautiful part about property. No, that property. is. I mean, especially in an area like this, yeah. you know? Yeah. So that's the beautiful thing. All right. We're going to take a quick break. We're going to come back. Mike and I are going to continue talking about some investment strategies and opportunities. Do you have a home, a rental property? Or maybe when we come back, we'll talk a little bit about what if you have a primary residence and you're sitting on a ton of equity and you're wondering, what options do I have? Can I convert this? Could I convert it to a rental? Could I take money out, go do something else, turn it into a rental? So we'll get into some of those conversations when we come back. This is Joe Cachero sitting alongside Mike D'Ambrosio. We'll be back with you in just a couple minutes. For more information on today's program, visit reradiolive.com. That's reradiolive.com. Hi, this is Joe Cachera of Real Estate Radio Live. Thanks for tuning in to our podcast. We are your go-to resource for all aspects of real estate, including buying, selling, refinancing, building, and legal and tax advice, and much more. You can subscribe to Real Estate Radio Live podcast on iTunes and Stitcher to listen to an engaging discussion about anything and everything real estate. So make sure you get our app, RE Radio Live, in the iTunes store to follow the show. Welcome back to Real Estate Radio Live. For more information on today's topic or guests, just visit reradiolive.com. That's reradiolive.com. Again, your host for today's edition of Real Estate Radio Live, Joe Kuchera. Welcome back in. Joe Kuchera with Real Estate Radio Live, the podcast series. Sitting alongside Mike D'Ambrosio today, we're talking about uh, investing, investment strategies in property and opportunities. First segment, we talked a little bit about, you know, if you had an existing property, maybe in a rental property, and you had a lot of equity, what kinds of things can you do? We also talked about maybe if you didn't have a property, where to start, maybe you could make in some investments. We'll, we'll jump back in. What we want to cover now is a little bit more accessing equity maybe from a current home or property and then using that equity to leverage to um, to purchase other properties. And then after we do that, Mike, maybe we could talk a little bit about some of the options someone might have if they've been in their home for years 
and then they come to you and they say, God, you know, I don't really don't want to sell right now, maybe a couple of years from now. But at the same time, I feel like I'm kind of tied to this house. Mm-hmm. I'd like to go explore. Let's say maybe someone likes to, and we've talked about this, maybe someone thinks they want to live by the beach, but they're not sure. You always hear this, and I'm a big believer in this. Before you retire somewhere, go spend a lot of time there, right? Cause yeah, absolutely. You've heard stories, people, I'm going to Nevada because there's no yeah. income tax. Or I'm going it. here because, <laughs> and all of a sudden, they hate it. Yeah, and now they can't come back, right? <laughs> so yeah. let's talk let's talk about that. But first, uh, maybe a little more on leveraging equity. Um, we, we started to talk about it. I'm a big fan of it. Again, if you don't get yourself in trouble, and you might say, well, what do you mean by that? Well, if you have a, it's just, if you have a primary residence and you, you know, it's worth one and a half million, maybe over three or 400,000 on it, and you're really wanting to invest in a rental property or some kind of investments, and you could get an equity line or you could even do a cash out and take money out and then continue a one, one loan on the property. There's a couple of different ways you could do it. Run those numbers figure out what it means. You know, let's say it costs you another three to $400 a month just for sake of this conversation. And now you have that, let's call it $200,000 you have out of your property. Now you're going to go look at a property to invest in, put a down payment in. And as we talked about before, Mike, the nice thing about that is you've just taken that money from an appreciating asset. So that property at 1.5 that you just pulled the two, there's no guarantee, but you know, as you use that money, maybe in the next five years, it's worth 1.6, 1.7. Who knows? Yeah. yeah, and the other piece of that is if you're out there listening and you have that low of a loan, loan to value on your mm-hmm. house and you haven't applied for an equity line or something, you need to just do Good it. Point. If you If you Good can point. control yourself, because <laughs> there's certain people out there that can't, because when you get an equity line on your house, it's it's like a credit card right. on your Better house. Be careful. So unless you're not going to go buy a boat or a yacht or something like that, you know, and you can control yourself, you should just have an equity line sitting there right. on your house. And, and then the beautiful thing about that mm-hmm. is if the market turns mm-hmm. and you'll still have access to that money, <clears throat> you know, but hopefully it doesn't and you don't need to use that money. But right. so anyways, you should go out and if you can get up to 80% loan, 75, 80%, you should go out and do it just to have it. And, and if some cool property pops up, you can use it. Yeah. And I mean, you can use it for a quick flip. You can use it as a down. I mean, you can use it for a lot of things, Mm -hmm. you know, so just keep that in mind. What about, uh, what about partnerships? Do you see much? I know you, you get involved on some of the, you know, um, more of development and this is a little bit different. That's a little different than what we're talking about, but partnerships, I know in some ways they sound good, but I would caution people be really be careful if you enter into partnerships with other people on investments, man, you know, sometimes it could be good, but it could get tough too. If things don't go so well, if it's a family member or friend and something doesn't go well, make sure it's written, you know, the partnership you're going to should go see an attorney that specializes Mm -hmm. in that. We can introduce you to that. But I think it's a great idea for, especially I've always talked about this idea um, for people that, you know, a lot of the people around our area in Silicon Valley have mm-hmm. their money tied up in stock. Mm-hmm. In fact, most of their wealth is tied right. in stock, which I don't think is smart. In fact, I think it's stupid, and I'll say that on the podcast yeah. if you're listening. It's dumb. You should diversify your assets. I get that your tech company is great, and it's really it's really valued at a lot right now, but nothing's ever going to take over real estate for that. There's and no I'll, doubt. I'll say that till the day I die. And this is probably, this is one of our last podcasts together. <laughs> so I'm not trying to get controversial, but, but it's true. Yeah. So if you got all your wealth tied up in stocks, get over yourself and go out there and try to reinvest it into something else. I'm mm-hmm. not, and it could be other than real estate, but if you are interested in real estate, maybe you can't afford to buy a property mm-hmm. on your own, then start putting together a couple of people maybe some of your buddies in the company or some of your friends outside mm-hmm. of the company pull some money together, put together a partnership agreement, whether that's an S corp or a LLC or mm-hmm. whatever it is, you know, put right. it together and start investing together. And no, make, I think, uh, so. no, it's right. It's true. Mike, matter of fact, you know, I work with a lot of financial planners over the years and they'll, they said a lot, what you just said, mm-hmm. they get concerned when someone's, let's just call it, someone's working for Apple. So their income's with Apple, their livelihood's with Apple, yeah. and then they got all these stock options. Yep. So their point, financial planner's point, is kind of like yours. It may sound kind of sexy and cool right now, yeah. but if something happens in the company, all of a sudden things drop 30 40 50%, yep. 
right? Now you have your whole life tied into yeah, Apple. Exactly. So what you're saying is diversify, take some of that, put it in real estate or something else so that you're really not, you know, really betting on, let's just call it betting on one individual company. Well, this yeah. is really why people invest in the stock market and mutual funds, right? Yeah. Instead of right. all in one, like if you put every single dime you own into a GM or something else, mm-hmm. a lot of people will say, no, just do it in a bucket or do it in a mutual fund so you're diversified. Yeah. It's never, typically, it's not ever a good idea to have everything you own or work for, like, all invested into one place. Exactly. So that's a good point. So yeah, I think the part of the whole partnership thing is <coughs> is a viable option, and and uh, maybe you don't even need a partnership. Maybe you can look. You just need to talk to somebody to see. Let, you let them know. Here's how much money I have. Right. And then maybe you can buy stuff on your own outside of the area or or something like mm-hmm. that. Or or you can buy into you can buy into like triple net leases or different things that. You know, which we could do another show on those. But yep. if you want have more questions about that, I'm happy to answer. But just certain, there's different things you could look at, yeah. and so it's just doing your research. That's a good point. Well, let's talk uh, before I want to end up too. I want to talk a little bit about the podcast, some of the stuff you're going to be doing, your mm-hmm. podcast, and some of the other stuff. We'll get to that before we close out. Yeah. But real quickly, the um, if you have a permanent resident, or I should say, a, fi- a primary residence. And this is another option I'd like people to think about. And you're, you kind of feel stuck. You don't want to move. You feel like, oh, my God, if I sell this, I'm, I'm having a million dollars equity, which all of a sudden sounds exciting on paper, but then you're paying a bunch of taxes, and you're going to see all that money melt away. So some of the things I'm seeing people do is rent your house out temporarily. Again, uh-huh. I'll give you that example. Let's two say years. that you know, as long as you keep it under two years, let's say you, want to, you think you want to retire in Monterey. Go rent a condo in Monterey, rent your home out. My guess is if you've been there for a while and they have equity, Mike, they could get their condo in Monterey paid for. Probably. Right? Yeah. Probably, depending on your debt yeah. load, whatever yeah. you're carrying. Let's say you rent your place out for ten grand a month, which is, you know, if it's a pretty nice place in a nice area, it's not it's unlikely not, yeah, these it's days. Yeah, it's not uncommon. And, and you could go get yourself a nice, really nice condo down there for, I don't know, five or six grand a month. I'm just throwing numbers out. I have no idea what it would be, but what we're talking about here today is leveraging opportunities for investments and making some decisions based on using your real estate as a vehicle for these ideas. I mean, one of the neat things about real estate is, yeah, it's a great place to live in. We all want a home. You want a place to live. Ultimately, you want to do that. But start thinking of it not as a as a you know an ATM machine like some people did, but think of it as a really kind of an investment vehicle, right? Yeah. No, I think one of the ideas it, it is, you know, people just you get one track, you get you get your blinders on. Right. So I understand. I mean, everyone puts their heads their head down and goes to work and you know, but you got to some days you got to just think creatively and yeah. and real estate allows you to do that and I, I don't I think it always will. Yeah. You know, that's what's fun about it and unfortunately around here, I mean, well fortunately for some people that are in the business, but unfortunately for people that are trying to buy real estate, it's hard around here right yeah. now and uh it you is. know, I feel bad about that, but there's nothing I can do. The market's driving what's going mm-hmm. on. The buyers are driving it. The sellers are driving it. It's uh, it's an interesting time. Yep. It's not always going to be like this, but I see it being like this for a while. Yep. <laughs> so get used to it. Yeah. And uh, But it is what it is. But just yeah. you know, try to get creative about real estate. I think that's what the premise of what we're talking about is. It is. Think out of the box. Get creative. That's what we're. That's what I, that's what we do. That's what we want to do. We want to educate, inform, engage, get you guys thinking. This is not a black and white world. We want you to kind of open your vision a little bit. And uh, but I'll say the last thing. Part of the last thing is please, 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 before you make any decisions, check with someone like Mike, me, or someone you trust. Because these are big decisions. We don't mean to take it lightly and, oh, just go do this. Yeah. I mean, make yeah. sure you, you do your due diligence before you do that. So Mike and I have been doing this for, what, five, six years, I think? Yeah. Maybe seven well, the years. Po- the radio and then the podcast. Yeah, radio and podcast. So yeah. radio's coming back. Yeah. Uh, Mike's have you announced be, that yet? Uh, I think I, I don't have. I haven't announced it. Listen <laughs> to just, me. You just I did. haven't announced it. I just did. <laughs> well, it's appropriate with you here. <laughs> Yeah. So live radio is coming back uh, right around the second week of September. We'll have more information for people in the next couple of weeks. We're excited about it. Um, one of the reasons is that we could take that content now and for the live show, we could satisfy, I hope, the live audience in the Bay Area. 
and uh, there's a demand for live content, it seems like, or I should say uh, local content. And then, um, you know, make that part of the podcast, too. So it'll be fun getting back to doing that. But um, you may be making some changes, maybe doing your own podcast, yeah. getting some information yeah. out. Yeah. No, we're just going to be – I'm still working on the format, um, but we're just going to – it's going to be quick, quick shot, five, ten minutes. Updates. Of, updates. On, it's yeah. going to be more Silicon Valley focused on uh, stats and what's going on, property of the week, mm-hmm. um, different deal stories on what's going on in the Bay Area, interesting things we're hearing. It's kind of like a market pulse okay. of the Bay Area, I guess you'd call it. Uh, it's kind of like we have these conversations at our office meeting, and I just got the idea, like, why don't I, you know, I'd like to just put that out there for the Silicon Valley buyers That's a good sellers. idea, because let's so. face it, most people, they really, um, I mean, even these podcasts, right, 30, 20, 25 minutes, most people would say that's max. Yeah. And I think for the most, I mean, studies show, most people, the short tension span, they would most <laughs> rather yeah. get real quick yeah. informational bits of information. Yeah. It seems like. It seems I mean, like, so, you know. So we'll see. <clears throat> we're going to try come out with that in a few weeks, and uh, hopefully I'll be, uh, I come on your show oh, yeah. live again. You'll always be part of the <laughs> Real Estate Radio Live family. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> that will Appreciate never change that. at all. So, yeah, obviously going forward, no matter what, Mike will always be part of the group here. You'll hear him from time to time. And uh, if you need any real estate needs, it's always a good a good person to check in with and build a relationship with. He's Thank been you. doing this a long time. And he cares about people. And I can say, I've said this before. There's very few people, uh, and I probably get frowned sometimes, in both of our industries, I still call it 10% that really treat people the way they're supposed to, treat your business the way you're supposed to, and, mm-hmm. and Mike's definitely one of those guys. Yeah, no, I say the same about you. And for people that don't know, I mean, Joe and I work hand-in-hand hand on yep. work with buyers, and, you know, if you call me, you're going to be talking to Absolutely. Joe. You know, so it's a, it's a two-way street. We're here to service you, the consumer. So for more information, you can always uh, check in with Mike, MikeDSales.com. Or you know to contact him, 408-630-0101. All right, until next time, thanks again for tuning in. As always, you can go to reradiolive.com for more information. Take care. Thanks, all. You've been listening to Real Estate Radio Live. For more information on today's program, visit reradiolive.com. That's reradiolive.com. Subscribe to our podcast. Discover more at reradiolive.com.